Hi, this is Tom from Infinity Bricks and this is my top 10 UCS Star Wars set video. We've had a recent announcement of the Snow Speeder and I thought rather than just doing a news video showing you images, I thought it'd be better to do a top 10 video which shows where that Snow Speeder may fit in. Now, these sets are based on how I view a UCS set, which is a display model. There are plenty of great sets out there. Um, some of them are more play set based and even though they have the UCS branding, I particularly haven't put them in here just because I personally feel with the UCS set I believe it needs to be a great display model and some of the play sets out there are really good um, display models and that may or may not find its way into my top 10 so here we go starting with number 10 and that is the blockade runner now the blockade runner is the first ship we see in Star Wars so watching a new hope before anything happens the moment that the title sequence is done the blockade runner just flies through the screen followed by the Star Destroyer. It's such a fantastic ship. It's such a great nostalgic homage to Star Wars itself. And this was the ship that also appeared at the end of Rogue One. Sorry for the spoilers. If you haven't seen Rogue One by now, that's not my fault. That's your fault for not watching it. But it's a fantastic ship. It looks absolutely brilliant. Now, unfortunately, this set didn't come with any minifigures. Um, there was a, another version, which was more of a playset version, which did come with figures, but this uh, Ultimate Collector Series version didn't. But even without that, I think it would look great on display. I think it's a really cool piece. My hope is that they remake this at some point, which I expect they will. And once they do, I will purchase that for my own collection. Unfortunately, at this point, I don't have it. Um, I wasn't collecting the UCS sets around the time that this was released in 2001. So um, I did miss out on that. But in the future, I'm pretty much sure they're gonna re-release this at some point. So that is my number 10. At number nine, believe it or not, it is the snow speeder so this is the recent snow speeder this is set 75144 and this set comes with the two pilots and minifigures now it's not minifigure scale it does look as if it should be minifigure scale because i believe that the minifigures would sit in the cockpit um, but the ship is actually quite a bit bigger than they would, it would need to be to be minifigure scale. But I think from a display model point of view, I think it does look fantastic. I really do love this ship. I love the angles of this ship. Um, it's probably one of my favorites out of them all. And um, the main reason why this is not number nine as opposed to, um, you know, maybe number one or whatever is purely just down to its size. Um, even though the piece count is pretty similar to the X-Wings and all the other ships that have come out, um, it, it seems to be such a smaller looking ship. So from that point of view, that's why it's at number nine, but I still think it looks absolutely fantastic. And just because it's number nine, it definitely doesn't mean that it's not one of my favorite ships because I'm definitely gonna be getting that on release. At number eight, I've picked the UCS X-Wing. Now we've had a couple of versions of the X-Wing and we've had one released in 2013 that um, I believe only retired last Christmas. And the other one was released quite a number of years ago and it was probably one of, I think it might have even been the first UCS set that came out. It was released in 2000, so it's 15 years old. It does hold up quite well as far as a UCS set compared to the newer UCS sets, but I must admit, I do prefer the 2013 version. So biggest problem with that version was this sticker. It was just a nightmare to put on. And I know from reading up on it, a lot of people had issues with it where uh, bubbles would appear and I myself actually had to cut it out with a scalpel. I do have a video for this UCS X-Wing, it's uh, X-Wing versus TIE Fighter, where I did a time-lapse video with both of them going together to see which one got built the quickest. So check that out in the link below, it's a little bit of fun to watch. But one of the main issues is the fact that this sticker on the screen just created bubbles. So I had to use a scalpel to cut it out and that was a bit of a nightmare. It did take some time to get that looking right, but looking at it on the shelf right now, it looks absolutely fantastic and looks really clean without any air bubbles at all overall i think it's cool it's a great iconic looking ship and technically i think i prefer the snow speeder in the sense of the overall visuals but this one just feels more substantial in the sense of its size so i'm definitely saying this x-wing is in the right place so at number seven is the tie fighter I don't know why people haven't been raving about this TIE Fighter as much as I would have thought they would. I think it looks amazing. It's such a great looking ship. 
it's such a great build as well i really enjoy building it again it's in the video link but i just think it looks so cool it really does look like the ship the way that the actual main body is constructed and how the wings hold together it just looks great and you can take it off the stand so you don't have to display it on the stand this also comes with a minifigure which was just a tie fighter pilot which i believe is exclusive in its printing for this set but the X-Wing only came with R2-D2, which wasn't exclusive. So this came with an exclusive figure, whereas R2 came with the X-Wing and it, there was nothing exclusive about it. So that was a little bit disappointing. But yeah, so this TIE Fighter, I think it looks awesome. And it's my number seven. At number six, it is the Star Destroyer. Now the Star Destroyer was released in 2002. So again, it was an early, um, an early build for the UCS sets. And I imagine we would be receiving this one again soon. It's amazing to look at, it's huge. It really does take up a lot of room. I don't have one, but I've seen them in the flesh. From a build point of view, it just looks absolutely fantastic. And again, it's there and it appears within the first opening sequence of A New Hope. And it comes with a very mini kind of blockade runner, which gives you an idea of the scale. I don't believe this set came with any minifigures either, so that was unfortunate, but from a display point of view, it looks absolutely fantastic. And if you've got the space for it, you know, it's definitely worth putting it out. At number five, I've gone with the Super Star Destroyer. Now this is an epic ship in the sense of its size and scale. It's huge, it looks absolutely awesome. Now the bonus with this as well is it also came with minifigures. Now part of the actual ship you can actually take off and then it gives you, you know, an inside display of where Darth Vader was and where he was briefing the bounty hunters about capturing Han Solo and the Millennium Falcon. So it's really cool to have that as an addition. It comes with the main bounty hunters apart from Boba Fett. So you've got Bosch there, you've got Dengar, you've got IG-88 and you also get Darth Vader and an Imperial officer. So it's really cool for what you get. You get those figures and some of those at that time when it was released were completely exclusive to this set. I believe that most of these have now been released elsewhere, all apart from IG-88, which I think is coming out in a new set, which is gonna be released in the Summer Wave, which will include all these bounty hunters. Apart from that before then, this was probably the only way getting IG-88 for sure. And it also comes again with a mini build for the Star Destroyer. So with the Star Destroyer, you've got the Blockade Runner as a mini build. With the Super Star Destroyer, you've got the Star Destroyer. So putting these all together will give you a good idea of scale. At number four, I've gone for the Sand Crawler. And there's two versions of the Sand Crawler again. And one was released in 2014 and has recently just come to a point of retirement and the other was released in 2005 so a good or you know a good 10 years apart now they're very different in their styling one is much more brick built and probably a lot more solid and the other one's using plates and sort of more modern building techniques now from a visual point of view comparing the two the one that i actually prefer is the most recent sand crawler which is released in 2014. Now, I think from a stability point of view, the older one might be better, but it doesn't really matter. So for me, it's all about displayability and not about the playability. Now, this also does come with some play features as did the other one. Um, you can move some panels to the side, you can get access to the interior where you've got cranes. There's a door that opens at the front and you've got the ability to put the jowers in the cockpit. There's all that kind of stuff. And I think, yeah, that's really cool. It's nice to have that, but it's more of a bonus for me. For me, it's all about that displayability. And I think the actual look of this sound crawler is pretty awesome. And on top of that, it came with quite a host of minifigures. And some of these are exclusive to this set. Owen Lars is probably the only one currently that you can't get anywhere else. I think some of the others you may now be able to get elsewhere but it's still cool to have those exclusive figures. So this is an awesome set. It was quite expensive, but for what it is, I think it's brilliant. I think it looks great. So for me, that is my number four. At number three, I've picked the Imperial Shuttle. Now, this is amazing. I don't know if you've had one or if you've seen one or if you've got one, um, but when you see it on display with its wings out, it is huge. It really is impressive. It looks absolutely perfect as far as a model is concerned it's smooth there's very few studs on display and it just takes up so much space and it just looks amazing on this you know the wings down just looks absolutely amazing now um, it does actually look really cool with the wings up as well now there was another model which we had recently which was the shuttle toridian 
that had the same sort of look to it, except when the wings are up, you could see the reverse studs, which, you know, doesn't look that great. But when the wings are out, it looks absolutely amazing as well. But with this one, it actually looks amazing, both with the wings out and with the wings up. It just looks so clean. So this set also came with figures. It came with four minifigures. You've got Darth Vader, you've got another Imperial officer, a Stormtrooper and Luke Skywalker. So it's depicting the scene where Luke and Darth end up sort of talking at the end of Return of the Jedi and Luke goes off to see the Emperor. So, but from a display point of view, this just looks absolutely awesome. So for that reason, it's my number three. At number two is the Slave One. To be honest with you, when this came out, it was, stunning to me i mean how on earth did they master a build like that it just looks so much like the actual model from the film and they've done such a great job capturing this overall look with all the colors that are on it and on top of that i don't mind seeing studs particularly because it's lego and from my point of view you need to see some studs you know to know that it's lego otherwise it might as well just be a plastic model uh, whereas opposed i guess with the shuttle it really is almost completely studless this one also follows the same pattern it's pretty much studless except for some places on the side but it just looks so good the color use and everything and also you know it's boba fett's ship it's the slave one and it's and it's a brilliant model and it, the scale of it's awesome the figures that came with it you had an exclusive boba fett which as far as i know is still exclusive because of the arm printing you had the best bin guard and you had Han Solo in Carbonate as well as a Stormtrooper. My number one set obviously is the Millennium Falcon for many reasons. One, because of its scale and size. Two, because it is the most iconic ship within the Star Wars universe. Three, because of its value and collectability, which adds, uh, you know, more appeal to it. You know, everybody really wants one because they know they're out of reach because nobody can really afford one. I've got a friend who's actually got one and I haven't got it. And I go around and I have a look and it's there on his shelf. And every time I go, I'm just staring at this thing. It is amazing. The figures that came with it just include the original team, if you like. So you've got Luke, Leia, Han, etc. Um, so that's really cool. Not a play set though, it really isn't. There isn't any features apart from being able to stick them in the cockpit. But generally speaking, just from the displayability, it is wow impressive. Now, my hope is that we're gonna see a new one of these being made. There's been so many rumors circulating from some of the sources that these rumors are coming from. It's probably likely more so to be true just because of the sources that have given this information. So I'm really hoping that we're gonna see this uh, Millennium Falcon. Now, it's possible it may be identical. I've got a funny feeling it would be a rebuild and probably a slightly smaller scale, which would be disappointing if I'm being honest. But even so, I really want to see another UCS Millennium Falcon. So that is my top 10 UCS sets. I want to give a couple of honourable mentions. I do love the Death Star 2. It is a display set, it's definitely not a play set, and there are no minifigures that come with it. It is epic to look at, but I think the only reason why I didn't put that into my top 10 is because of the scaling of it. Obviously, it's you know unrealistic to have a Death Star at any sort of scale that could be classed any, in any way, shape or form as a minifig scale Death Star would be just too huge. But when I put it with the other sets, the scaling of the Death Star is obviously completely reduced. And, and you know, the same could be said for the Super Star Destroyer, I suppose, but obviously much, much more so with the Death Star. Um, the other thing about it as well is there's a lot of repeating kind of elements to it that some way kind of detracts a little bit from me, you know, in the sense of its uniqueness. And I know those building techniques used to get all those plates at all those different angles and to get that sort of spherical look is tricky and hard, but the variety when you're looking at it, it is just literally just like a solid shape. And you know, even though the Super Star Destroyer is also using pretty much all gray, I think it feels so much more epic in the sense of its length and scale, which is why that made it into the top 10. So just an honorable mention there to the Death Star 2. And the other honorable mention I want to give is to R2-D2. Now this again is fantastic and a friend of mine owns this and he has it on his shelf but again the main reason why this didn't enter in is purely on its scaling. I do really love it. I really think it's fantastic as a display piece. It does come with an R2. Again that one is not a exclusive R2 but I still feel it just looks absolutely amazing but the main reason why that didn't enter into the top 10 is purely down to the fact that everything else was pretty much a ship and all these ships kind of go together 
whereas R2-D2 doesn't quite fit in. Now, I understand if some of you don't agree with my choices. Again, this is all down to personal preference. Um, I think most people would agree the Millennium Falcon would be number one, and I'm pretty sure that you would put the Slave one in there somewhere. Um, some of the con sort of contentions may be whether you preferred the previous Sandcrawler or not, or even maybe the previous Snowspeeder, you know, or X-Wing. So it's tricky to say. I know there are some other sort of cool looking ships like Darth Vader ship and other things, but I think when it came to it, it's down to that sort of overall sense of scale that the actual TIE Fighter as opposed to Darth Vader's TIE Fighter gives. So that's my main reason for choosing those. So anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe for any future content.